She has been a co-lead of dynamic initiatives such as Black Voices in PR. And she's also developed an interest in advancement through policy. Let's welcome Tosin Ayayomi. Test your knowledge to see how smart you truly are. So here's, here goes the first question. Um, I'll say a hundred pounds question. <laughs> so here it goes. Who is the only British politician to have held all four great offices of state at some point during their career? I'll give you some options. John Mayer, James Callaghan, David Lloyd George. <laughs> I love that like, look in your face, it's classic. <laughs> Just disclaimer. Guys, don't judge me if I don't know this. I'm going for James because I'm guessing and um, yeah, let's see. That is a good guess. That is a good guess. But guess what? You are correct. Well done. <laughs> I'm, guess I'm guessing that was actually too easy for you and you were just playing, playing along. Person, so what was your biggest achievement at University of Manchester, apart from having a first class, of course? <laughs> question I, do you know what it ranges I think I I think for me anyway like I've had a lot of like what I like to call micro achievements so obviously academically I think I did quite well both my master's and my um, undergraduate and kind of you know being awarded so much I think two of my key ones which I will draw out on the academic side I think actually it was, it was during my master's and um having an award for my dissertation because for me my dissertation meant a lot to me and I think anyone that has done a dissertation can testify to kind of having a connection to it and to be awarded the social um responsibility dissertation of the year it meant a lot to me because the topic that I picked meant a lot and I think a second achievement is really I've always believed that I was independent but actually knowing you are actually a very independent person to live outside of your home for four years essentially and to cater for yourself to, and to make sure that you're responsible and accountable for yourself I mean it might seem really like minor but those are the steps that you take from being an adolescent, adolescent to an adult and they're really critical so I think I feel really grateful for doing that in Manchester because as an only child I think if I was at home maybe there's a part of that could have that could have maybe cradled me and I might have not been as independent as I um would have liked that's awesome. So what would you say to anyone else that is looking to start uni soon and they are still contemplating whether to go out of London to study or stay within London? What would you say are the benefits of going outside London? Um, I guess to answer the first part, to anybody who is contemplating and thinking, should I apply for universities outside London or should I stay in? First of all, do what makes you the most comfortable. But if you are just nervous and you want to go, outside London but you're also like actually will I survive it will I be scared can I handle it trust yourself is what I would say if you want to do it then believe in yourself because you can most definitely do it you'll be surrounded with other students and other people that you're going to meet along the way so don't be scared and my experience outside London was amazing because I um, didn't pick a place like Bath or it's Anglia I was in another city so again that's something to consider of going from one city to another city might be easier than going from a city to a more rural area so I noticed that you had a change of course at uni you studied law and then you moved on to international relations why was that as a little kid I've always wanted to study law because I had an idea of what it means to be I don't know kind of like a modern day superhero I thought what can I go into to help people who are oppressed people that don't understand who just need support who need somebody to stand up for them and I feel like as a kid I've always been really outspoken and because of the influence of people around me as well as tv I thought yep this is it I didn't really believe I was smart enough to become a doctor so for me law was the next best thing I was like I can help people and I can honestly help people change their lives and I started law and honestly, I hated it. I didn't enjoy it at all. But what I knew was I enjoyed, as of then, being in education. So I decided to just further my education and do something I was interested in just as a subject. So politics is something I love and international politics, be it that. So I thought, why not do international relations? There's nothing to lose. People and don't have that luxury of waiting to the end of the, the year 
to say that, okay, I'm just going to get a degree and then see what happens after. So I think it's a great risk to take. But for those who don't have that luxury of doing that, especially when you spend money, <laughs> you spent a lot of money for a cause, you know, you've taken out a loan and you're thinking, I'm, I'm already in debt, so I'm not going to waste another few years to do another course. So what would you say to those? I guess for me, because I, that wasn't my reality per se, but I think just on top of my head, I guess, if you are in that situation where you feel like you can't waste time or you feel as though you need to figure it out there and then seek up, seek advice, seek support. There's always someone around you, be it in the university or someone in your personal life who will know what to do, what you, be it changing your course in your first year. I think first year is always a great year to change your course because it's just adding one more year to university. And sometimes if, if you do it early enough, it, you don't have to add any other amount of time. So I, I would say don't sit on the feeling. If you are strong in that feeling and you you have made up that decision, I do not like this. Because I came to that conclusion in my second year. So I, I was it was far gone. But if it's quite early for you and you're like, nope, this is not for me, then act on it because you'd be surprised where it could get you. So in your experience, would you say that there was any professional implications and as well as benefits of the course that you opted for? in order to start your journey in the right direction? Um, hmm. To be honest, if I'm being frankly honest with you, the profession that I'm in now and what I've studied are quite far. A lot of people are very shocked actually because in my field of um, work, PR, a lot of people tend to study English, English literature, English language, media studies, communications. Sometimes you have a historian here or there, but for the most part, it's English or media studies. So when I say law and international relations I'm often like, wow really oh my gosh but what I will say is you know you build a skill set you build um you build an interest in different areas and I think that has helped me because I've come into PR knowing okay I want to do purpose-led things because I did international relations and then I know that oh I have a really strong research skill because as a lawyer well someone that studied law and international relations you do a lot of research so if anything I think I've just drawn on skills for my degree that's helped me in my um, career it's just, now it's just a question of what else is expected what else can they do why do you think it's hard for them to get a job so for example some people struggle unfortunately because sometimes their grades if you are competing with other people and maybe you have like a certain grade it might make it difficult some people will go as far as to say, um, as a person of colour, you might find things difficult compared to your white counterpart. So um, I'll be honest, sometimes I felt as though I had what my white counterparts had, but when it came down to a decision between myself and the other person, the other person would always get the job. So that was kind of my experience, but it differs for everybody. So, so what do you think can be done about it, most especially during this pandemic? What do you think can be done to help some of these fresh graduates? So one thing I would definitely advise is to be as proactive as you can. When I say being proactive, I personally, I don't support unpaid internships or unpaid work. So I won't, I'm not a person to ever advise you to do that, but I know some people will do unpaid work, but it's 2021. I don't believe in unpaid work. However, if you're struggling to get a job, what you could do is, you know, tap into your hobbies, tap into your interests. So for example, um, I blogged for a bit. I started an Instagram page. I kept myself occupied. It's really important to keep yourself occupied and where you can. I mean, volunteer work is is great. I mean, I did say I, I'm not for, you know, unpaid work, but volunteer work is different because you're volunteering your time. So I think find different things that you could do to fill up the time because when, it, when you are given the opportunity or you are, you know, given a job interview, imagine now having a job interview and saying, you know, I did struggle. There's a seven months gap in my CV because of the current climate. However, I blogged on Instagram or I started a YouTube channel or I volunteered for my local charity. It just shows your current employer that you are a proactive person. You're willing to do something rather than being idle. And this is not to shame anyone who in this moment, maybe because you have anxiety or you're overwhelmed, you don't feel up to it. But I think the moment you feel ready and able to definitely just occupy yourself with things that you love. Would you say that there is equality in, I mean, generally in the UK? Who I could write a book about this topic. <laughs> to answer your first half about, do I think my industry is inclusive or, you know, quite diverse? 
there is so much controversy around that at the moment. You know, people say things like PR is so white. Oh, and it is a very, very white middle class to higher class industry. So therefore there is a lack of representation and you have amazing schemes like Taylor Bennett um, and creative access doing amazing things to try to bridge that gap. But as it stands, PR is predominantly white and it needs a lot of um, diversity to be honest. And as for the UK, as it, as you know, in a broader context, it's not um, as diverse. London, I think if you live all your life in London, you can get, you can get sucked into that idea that yes, I live in a very diverse country like I see black and Asian families white families people of different origins all around me but the moment you just step out of that bubble you realize that the UK as a whole is very white and is not diverse at all absolutely thank you for that Tosin um but do you think it's literally the same in education as well coming from your experience so yes I think the education system as of now if you see conversations rising you have different calls for people, activists saying things like decolonize our education system. And they say that because all throughout the education system in the UK, it's very whitewashed. And what I mean by that is we learn things from white academics, white literature. So everything is in a very white sphere and you can kind of get lost in that. So I think education in itself can, just in terms of what we learn, can be so can be so white and when you look at high institutions i'm sure everybody has heard of the conversations about needing more diverse students in russell group universities i mean it's quite sad to have you know the top 26 universities and not have enough black or brown people in those institutions because it speaks to the institutions that we're trying to i guess come against as as a whole we want things to be more accessible because we know when you go to you know quote unquote the best university it opens doors so i think a lot needs to be done in education all the way from what kids are taught in school, just to kind of diversify the palette of what has been taught, all the way to when it comes to entry levels into these organized into these institutions, it needs to be more diverse and more inclusive. Thank you very much for sharing that, Tosin. Um, you know, I, and I'm sure you're aware that there are many young adults now who are suffering from financial hardships, especially during the pandemic. They have been depressed or they have been um, feeling constantly under strain or they have lost confidence in themselves. So what do you think can be done or can be made available to them to avoid long-term effects on their future life prospects? This is definitely a question for the government representatives, just saying. But um, I mean, if it, if it was done to me and like how I feel young people could be supported, I think, you know, social media is a powerful tool and I think it can be utilised a, a lot more. So, you know, just using, for example, social media um, to advertise those avenues that are available to them because you have so many amazing, like, charities and organisations helping people in terms of mental health. So that's definitely a key one because um, a lot of the time when you are in a low place financially, you, you go to a low place mentally. So I definitely think that that is definitely something that needs to be offered or at least like you know advertise and show and people need to know young people like this is here for you even if it means an NHS running a scheme that just makes it very apparent that we're here to support you and in terms of like <clears throat> the financial aspects of things I mean it's quite a difficult one because obviously I understand like we're in a pandemic I don't really know what the government is doing with their cash flow but maybe you know bursary schemes you know things that were kind of afforded to kids before because a lot of my friends at university had grants and bursaries and they had financial support that's one thing I have to credit the UK for definitely doing if you compare it to places like the US they really do offer loans grants so many different things you just have to research and see what you um fall for so I guess in terms of after the pandemic I'm sure things like that would be really helpful just so you know you have some kind of you know financial aid to get you through the, the rough part but I think yeah financial aid pack aid packages as well as um you know mental health um organizations i think those are the two main things that can be offered to young people finding it really difficult yeah and because especially now that there is an increased competition with you know bloodthirsty graduates or fighting for the same job it seems like you need more than just a degree to get a job you know so what can they do what do you think can be done or the government can do to to help in such a situation like that so funny that you say that because I remember during like you know 
this was the end of university there was always this common running joke with grads where it was like so I apply for a job and they say not only do you need a degree but you need some experience and it's like what experience I spent the last three years trying to get this damn degree so it can be so frustrating because it's true you feel this pressure of having a little bit more to your CV having something that makes you stand out and you know one thing you can do now if you're a current grad, like I mentioned before, be more proactive whilst at university, you know, do a lot of things in your societies, get a part-time job, um, you know, head a, head a society, do different things in your university, even if it's pro bono, be active in that, that can really fill your CV. Try to work summers. I had a friend who every summer would get a short one month, two months internship, two weeks, and it really, really helped her. Um, again, occupying yourself outside, so doing things on social media, blogging you know start you know start, I don't know if you're into gymming do an exercise workout like there's so many things that you can do okay so and I know you've touched a lot on um people on going on an internship because it helps in one way or the other would you recommend this approach especially for graduates who are um considering going on a gap year to do an internship most definitely I would definitely um I'm such an advocate for that I mean even though I never did it during university I definitely tried so unfortunately I wasn't able to stick your one but if you can I would definitely like you know applaud that you do it because it's so helpful even for yourself because sometimes you know you get internship in this in a sector that you're considering and you realize actually after doing this for three months I realized isn't for me or it might steer you in the right direction where you're like, nope, this is exactly what I need to be doing. So I would definitely, definitely, you know, tell anyone to do it. Thank you for those words of inspiration. I'm sure it would definitely help other graduates who are looking to get the first step into their career. On that note, I'd like to thank you, Tosin, for joining us today. It's been awesome with you. Thank you Have so much. Have a great one. It's been amazing.